Number 5. Who is John Doe 29? In April 2015, the FBI released this picture of a man who they are calling John Doe 29. In the picture, the man is holding a young girl. Sadly, this picture was found in a series of photos where the girl in the picture is being sexually abused by another unidentified man. The FBI is not accusing the man in the picture of being involved with the sexual abuse, but they believe he may have information about the girl and her abuser. What is known is that the picture was taken before January 2008, because that's when the pictures came to the attention of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The man in the picture, who is likely between the ages of 30 and 45, is wearing a unique silver ring on his ring finger on his left hand. Hand. This ring is similar to a ring that the abuser wears, but he wears it on his right hand. The man is also wearing a white, black, and red shirt that has writing and or a design on the sleeve. As for the victim, she has blonde hair and she is wearing white Nike sneakers with a black swoosh. Unfortunately, the FBI doesn't know where in the world the picture was taken, meaning the girl and her abuser could be anywhere. The FBI is hoping that someone will recognize the man or the ring and they will notify them because they fear that the girl still may be in danger. Number 4. The Murder of Ali Surmas On January 26, 1986, the bullet-ridden body of 44-year-old Ali Surmas was pulled out of the Darling River near Wentworth, Australia. The disabled pensioner and the father of four had been shot once above each eye, in the back of the head, and several times in the body. Cernmas went missing three days before his body was found. He was last seen outside of a post office in the city of Merbian, which is about 30 miles away from where his body was pulled out of the river. Eyewitnesses remember seeing Cernmas because he was arguing with a man and two women. Eyewitnesses were able to give a description of the man and the two women and the car they were driving, which was a green Holden HQ with a white roof. Another person that the police are looking for is the man in this picture. This picture was found in the glove box of Sir Mass's car, and his friends and family have no idea who the man in the picture is. The police have no information about the man, but they would like to speak to him, because police believe that Sir Mass may have been kidnapped by someone he knew. What the police don't know is why Sir Mass was executed in such a brutal fashion. He didn't have any enemies, and he didn't have any links to organized crime. The police are hoping that one of the three people that Sir Mass argued with on the day he went missing, or the person in the picture will come forward and hopefully shed light on this 30-year-old mystery. Number 3. Who is the El Dorado Jane Doe? In June 1991, the police were called to a CD motel in El Dorado, Arkansas. In one of the rooms, they found an exotic dancer named Mercedes dead from a gunshot. Mercedes' ex-boyfriend, James McElfin, was arrested and convicted of the murder. Now, here's where the mystery starts. When the police looked in Mercedes' purse, they found a piece of identification issued in Arkansas with Mercedes' picture and the name Cheryl Ann Witt. The police tracked her family down in Minneapolis and called her parents. That's when they learned that the real Cheryl Ann Wick was alive and well. It's believed that Mercedes stole Wick's identity when they worked together at a strip club in Minneapolis. So if Mercedes wasn't really Cheryl Ann Wick, then who was she? Over 25 years later, the police still do not know the real identity of the woman they call the El Dorado Jane Doe. The police have several pictures of her, including the ones on the screen now. They also have fingerprints and her DNA, but even with all that information, they do not even know how old she is, let alone her identity. They believe that she was somewhere between the ages of 20 and 30 when she died. She was 5'10", 162 pounds, and she had old scars over her right eye and her left waist. In her possession, they found menus from restaurants in Texas and Virginia. She also had a diary and she refers to two people named Tyrone and Gail. Finally, she had a Bible inscribed with several names in it. All of them had the last name Stroud. Besides using the name Cheryl Ann Wick, the El Dorado Jane Doe also used the names Cheryl Kaufman, Shannon Wiley, Sharon Wiley, Kelly Lee Carr, and Kelly Carr. The man who killed her also said that she used the name Helen Stenner and that she was from Oklahoma. There has been rampant speculation about why the El Dorado Jane Doe stole Wick's identity and started a new life, like she was a prostitute on the run from an organized crime syndicate. It's also possible that she was a mother. Before she was murdered, she told a friend that she had two children and at least one of them was a girl. Supposedly when she was murdered, her children were living with her mother. The police are still hoping to identify the El Dorado Jane Doe so that they can give her family, if she has any, some closure. Number 2. The Murder of Eva K. Weno. On May 1, 2008, six-year-old Eva K. Wennell was having lunch with her husband of 20 years. When he returned home after work later that evening to their upscale home in Lawrence, Georgia, he found Kay dead in a pool of her own blood on the kitchen floor. Kay most likely encountered her killer in the foyer of her home. That's where she was punched hard enough in the face to cause blood to splatter. Kay was then chased to the kitchen where her throat was slit. The coroner determined that she was murdered several hours before she was found. 
There was no signs of forced entry and nothing in the house was stolen, so police believe that Kay was murdered over something personal. That made the obvious suspect her husband, but he was quickly cleared as a suspect. The next logical conclusion was that if it wasn't her husband, Kay could have been killed by someone she was having an affair with. Supporting that theory was a letter that was sent to the newspaper, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, several weeks after the murder. The letter was written using letters cut from a magazine. It read, I loved her. She said that we could be together. She told me that she hated her house and that fat, miserable, lying f husband. She said that she loved me, but that was a lie too. I told her this would happen if she didn't keep her f promises to me. His money was more important than our love. We could have been so happy together. The police are unsure if the letter is actually from the killer or just a disturbing prank. Another major clue in the murder was that there was eyewitnesses who saw a man near the Wendell's house the night before and the night of the murder. From their description, the police were able to compose this composite sketch. A few months after the murder, Kay's family was looking through some old photos and they came across a picture of this man. Kay's family has no idea who he is and they don't know how Kay knew him. One thing that they did know was that he looked a lot like the man in the composite sketch. Police are hoping that the man in the picture will come forward or someone who knows him will contact them. Without him, the murder of Eva Kay Wennell may never be solved. Number 1. William Richard Bradford's Picture Collection In July 1984, the body of a woman was found in an alley in Los Angeles. She had been strangled to death. Her shirt was missing and some of her skin had been cut off. She had no identification, so she was called Jane Doe No. 60. A month later, 15-year-old Tracy Campbell went missing. She was last seen with her neighbor, William Richard Bradford, who was awaiting trial for rape. His apartment was searched and inside they found 56 pictures of nearly 60 women. Two of the pictures were of Campbell and of Jane Doe No. 60. Using a rock formation in the picture, the police were able to find where Bradford had taken Campbell. It was a campsite in the desert north of Los Angeles. At the campsite, they found Campbell's body. She had been strangled to death and her face was wrapped up in Jane Doe No. 60's shirt. Jane Doe No. 60 was later identified as 21-year-old Sherry Miller, who Bradford met at a bar. He lured her out to the desert by saying he was a photographer and he wanted to help her build her modeling portfolio. After raping and strangling her, Bradford cut off her tattoos and dumped the body. Then, a month later, he used the same tactic to lure Campbell to her death. Bradford was convicted of both murders and he was sentenced to death. Then, in 2006, the Los Angeles Police Department released the 54 pictures of the women that were found in Bradford's apartment. One of the pictures, number 28, was identified as Donna Lee Campbell Dumas. Her headless corpse was found in Malibu in 1978. Five days before her body was found, Dumal had met Bradford at a bar. Just like with Miller and Campbell, the police believe that Bradford promised to take her pictures for a modeling job. The LAPD suspects that Bradford was actually a prolific serial killer who used the modeling tactic to get his victims into remote areas. They believe that he has more victims and they are trying to identify all the women in the pictures. A few of them have been identified, for example, woman number three is the sister of CSI Miami actress Eva LaRue. However, many of the women have yet to be identified. As for Bradford, he took the true number of his victims to his grave. He died of cancer at the age of 61 in March 2008. As always, thank you for watching this week's video. If you recognize anyone in any of these pictures or want to take a closer look at any of them, please follow the links posted in the info section below. If you don't recognize anyone and you just want to watch another video about unsolved mysteries, please check out one of the videos on the screen now. Also, if you like that video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We post a new video every Sunday at 11am Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for watching.